uh, culture from a lens of creativity and innovation, uh, right? So in order for uh, creativity and innovation to happen, um, uh, one of the most important things, so that was the first session, typically I do before we do the culture piece, which is, you know, how do you be, how can we be creative? So I, if I have to kind of, you know, put a gist of, uh, uh, or a, a two line summary of uh, how can we be creative as individuals, it will be uh, the following. Uh, we need to have as many disparate and disparate and diverse ideas. Number one. Number two, we need to be able to connect these disparate and diverse ideas in new and different ways. That's it. If you actually look at creativity, this, if you just do these two things, uh, you can be creative, uh, uh, you can be more creative than anyone else around you, right? Number one, have a lot of uh, distinct, disparate and uh, diverse ideas. Figure out a way to combine them in disparate and diverse ways. So with that context, what is important if you want to create a culture of creativity and innovation is to have diverse points of view, not just as individuals, but also as, as a team, which is where uh, there is a whole uh, zeitgeist right now uh, uh, in the world where we are, everyone is talking about the importance of diversity uh, and um, uh, inclusion, uh, d and I, right? So D, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, it is extremely critical when it comes to creative and innovation for sure. And when I said diversity, I don't just mean diversity in terms of gender diversity. It is important. Uh, culture diversity, which is, for example, uh, do you have people within your team from different cultures? Uh, age diversity, cognitive diversity, emotional diversity, thinking uh, uh, diversity as well. Cognitive diversity is all about, you know, you, you, you may have people from different cultures, uh, races, colors, ages, but if they all think in the same way, uh, given a particular situation, then you, you really don't have diversity. So cognitive diversity is also very, very important. And we need to figure out a way to increase, continuously increase this diversity. Now, what happens when you increase diversity is it increases conflicts within the team. So, uh, because, you know, if you have uh, strong uh, opinions uh, because of your diversing, uh, uh, of, of the diverse uh, uh, inputs that is coming in from the diverse people that you have in the team, uh, you need to be able to manage that conflict. You need, these conflicts need to be Healthy. What do I mean by healthy? It should always, the conflict should always be on the idea and not on the person. So you can have conflicting views on a particular idea, on a particular solution, or a particular problem, but never on the solution, on the person, right? So that is the, uh, that is a healthy way of having uh, uh, conflict. So if you have increasing conflict, how do you manage that? And how do you create an environment where you have healthy conflict? you need to have high levels of trust, right? So you need to be able to create an environment where everyone feels that it is okay for them to share their opinion, which is conflicting with everyone else's opinion. Generally, it is very, very difficult to create these levels of trust. And that is the reason why it is extremely difficult to have healthy conflict, which is also the reason why, uh, while everyone says they want diversity, uh, uh, you find so less of it in the world. Now, how do you increase or get to high levels of trust? Which is by increased communication. You consistently, con continuously talk about, uh, as a leader, you need to talk about uh, what do you think? Uh, what is your, uh, 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 what are some of the challenges that you are facing? What are, What is it that you're thinking? If you made a decision, why have you made the decision? Uh, I've written a blog on uh, uh, how do you increase diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. Um, uh, I can share the link if, if you're interested um, uh, at some point in time, uh, where I talk about the fact that uh, it is so critically important that uh, decisions, not just communicating the decision, but also the thinking that went behind the decision and document it so that you know uh, everyone knows why a particular decision has been made. And everyone can then rally along and move forward with that decision having been made. So improved and increased communication is very, very critical to create an element, uh, high levels of trust, which, which then allow uh, conflict to, uh, to be managed in a healthy way, therefore ability to increase diversity. And uh, one of the clear things that we need to also have with, uh, within the teams 
is to have very clear expectations, values, and beliefs. Each one of us brings with our with uh, as uh, us as individuals expectations from the team, uh, values that we uh, matter to us, and belief systems that we come from. Uh, and it is important that we uh, bring uh, and communicate these expectations, uh, the values that are important to us, and the belief systems that we have. Externally, externalize it within the team, and come to a come to a common understanding of as a team what are our expectations from each other. As a team, what do we value the most? As a team, what do we believe in? So this movement from individual expectations and values and beliefs to an expect in, uh, to a team-based expectations, values and beliefs is what actually can create a culture which uh, in which you know people can thrive in terms of creativity and also uh, as a team you will find that they are the ones which are able to drive innovation uh, within the organization so again as i said curiosity uh, uh, creativity and agency when all these three comes together that is when true innovation happens you need curiosity in order to find problems that you want to solve you need creativity to be able to find the answers for the problems that you have found to be solved. And then you need to have agency, which is the ability to do something about it. Right? It is only when all three come together as a team that you can be creative, uh, that you can be innovative. Uh, so the innovation is a combination where curiosity, creativity, and agency come together. So in order to enable this innovation, what all uh, is needed? From a space perspective, right? So we need uh, a temporal space, which means you need to have time in order to do something about a pro particular problem, or think about a particular problem, or think about a particular uh, uh, solution. You need uh, cognitive space. You need uh, uh, the ability uh, uh, to fall back and the time to fall back and actually think about what is it that we want to achieve as a team. What are some of the problems that we want to try and solve? What are some of the challenges that we have in order that we need to solve in order to go up or to achieve whatever we want to achieve? We need to have emotional space, which means that you know we need to be able to uh, care for whatever it is that we are doing. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we need to have agentic space, which means that you need to have time on your calendar so that you can actually act on whatever it is that you want to act on. So do people have time? Do people think deeply uh, and not just are so busy that they don't have any time to do any uh, deep thinking at all? Uh, do people care about their work or they just come uh, and see work as uh, uh, as the way to pay their bills uh, and just about that? And of course, uh, last but not the least, uh, do, they, do people believe that they can actually take action on the ideas that they've come up with to solve a particular problem or a challenge? And on top of all of this is the physical space, right? Does the physical space allow uh, people uh, to be able to uh, bring all of this together and um, uh, be creative from that point of view? Uh, 